delay by today. So this here is a touch bar MacBook. As you can see here, this is 19.8 volts, zero amps. So where's our PP bus? The first thing we need is a proper PP bus. 12.6, seems good. Screw going through rails one by one. Aha. All right, so after doing that, let's see if this MacBook much bar touch bar turns on. Much bar is still dead. Zero amps are being used. Nastiness. Hmm, is that capacitor on a line that could be short circuited? That capacitor is on one PP12V SSD. What's its resistance to ground? It's a one volt rail, so I expect it to have a fairly low resistance to ground. 19.43 kilo ohms. So as nasty as this area is, that's not a point of contention for me. A oh. little bit of corrosion over there, but that's negligible. And according to the schemat schematic, schematic, that's something else for the SSD. Boring. SSD power rail is not shorted. Hello, what's this? Oh boy. What are you for? Your UB seven. What do you do? You create PP5V4 S4. Thunderbolt 5 volt regulator. Ah, PP5V S4 S underscore T underscore USB-C. And I can measure the output of that on LB700. Where is LB700? Perhaps it's on the other side of the board. Yes, it's right here. Right to the left or left to the right of this. Let's see if that's short circuited to ground. MacBook. Actually, no, a kilo ohm. Hmm. How can Apple use such underrated high side, low side MOSFETs, chokes, and caps and VRMs for i7, i9 products? Uh, there's a very simple answer to that, my friend. There's a very simple answer. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Because you're going to buy it anyway. As long as you're going to buy it anyway, and as long as the users are going to continue to defend the company that makes poor design decisions, they will continue to get away with it. So as long as you continue to buy it, they'll continue to put it out there. And they're going to keep pushing the limit and see how much can we cheap out? How much engineering can we outsource to somebody else? How much engineering can we have done by an intern instead of a paid employee? What can we get away with? And what they can get away with is exactly what you let them get away with. There can be a lot of things that are corroded, but only one of them that's actually relevant. You've got to come to learn what's actually relevant. Like on the older boards, I look and I go, USB circuit corroded, yawn. Sensor corroded, yawn. PP bus circuit. Oh, interesting. I have to get to a point where I know what stuff is needed and what is not on here. That's going to be a while. All right, so this is trackpad can SPI connection. This, ha this is something to do with the trackpad SPI connect. That has nothing to do with why my thing is not working. So I don't care that that's corroded just yet. This has a little bit of nastiness near it. What are you for? That's U7000. This chip creates PP bus G3 hot, which happens to be present. So I can ignore that and move on to the, oh my God. What's this? What's all this stuff over here? So it's a bunch of pull-up resistors. PM RISM RISIT. PM Sleep S3L, 
Bingo! SMC PMG 2EN. So this is where all the enables are for all the different power lines. This is important. PMIC and power control. Ding, ding, ding. We have found our answer as to what is actually important and what needs to be fixed on this board. So we're just going to put a little bit of flux. That's one micropole of flux. One micropole. See, we found the important corroded section. So it can be a lot of corroded sections, but only one of them is going to be one that's actually worth putting time into. Shake it off. Scrape it off. Shake it off. Scrape it off. Shake it off. Scrape it off. Melt crappy solder joints. Re hot. Yes, good crappy solder joints. Now cool yourself, crappy solder joints. Alrighty, I think we found the cause of our problem. Can anybody say they see what the cause of our problem is? See what I said about finding the right area? This is the area that's important, where all the enable signals are. And will you look at that? Wow, I'm barely scraping and it's just gone. Look at that. So we've scraped away the coppery shit on the PCB. Now we're going to run a jumper wire. We're going to put a tiny one micro pole of flux. Now, I don't know if that piece under it is actually going to ground or something else. I'm going to run my wire around this. You never know. In case I dug too deep or did something stupid. Damn, these tweezers are destroyed. These are no longer tweezers. Need to get a new set of tweezers. I'm going to scrape with the exacto and tweeze with the tweezers. I'm going to make a New Year's resolution of myself starting immediately to never scrape with tweezers again. But it's very tempting to do that, but it's very bad to do that. Okay, we plug it in. Let's see if we get any change. As can be seen here, our touch bar is drawing power and it's working this touch bar has been made great again by that little jumper wire but we have pp5v underscore pmic ldo so that comes out of u7800 which looks like pmic and power control where does it go it has to go to something all right it goes to one part of banjo which is the same chip so it goes from one side of Banjo to another? 
Really? This is a BGA, PMI U7800. This is an IC, U7800. Okay, this, this genuinely confuses me. Why would this signal, why would that trace missing even matter? Look at this. Am I, am I losing it? Is this, am I being silly here? No, seriously, look. So PM, PP5E PMIC LDO, the jumper wire for it was broken. But it seems like a signal that's completely self-contained within U7800. Look, it's going to U7800 ball M10. It's going to U7800 ball E13. It's going to U7800 ball N7. It's going to U7800 uh, R7866 bef uh, before this zero ohm resistor before it goes to another part of U7800. This signal appears to be entirely self-contained within one chip. So this makes no sense. This makes absolutely no sense. Why would it matter if a trace was broken? Because think about it. That signal is entirely created within one chip. It's created and distributed within that one chip. So if a trace on the board is broken and that trace is for that signal, why would it matter if that is entirely self-contained within one chip? So let's figure out where U7800 is. So U7800 is going to be the power management chip, which is, hello? Yeah, so that's going to be the chip that's right over here. So that signal that we reattach with that jumper wire on this side of the board, we re it's not like that signal comes from the CPU and then goes to the PMIC, or goes from the PMIC to the charging IC, or goes from the PMIC to the SMC, or the chip that creates the 5 volt rail or anything like that. That signal is entirely self-contained within this one chip. Yet for some reason, if a trace gets corroded on the board, that chip, the board just stops working. Do you understand why this makes no sense? It's, it's, it's like saying that if I'm sitting next to you, right? Let, let's say somebody named Chris was sitting next to me and our cell phones were broken. That's like saying that we're no longer able to talk to each other or communicate because both of our cell phones are broken. But I'm sitting right next to the person, so how is it that we're unable to communicate? You know, it's, it's just silly. It's stupid. It doesn't make a damn bit of sense. It, I mean, that, that, that just... Really? Like, why? And that, let's say that that signal was linked from one part of that chip to the other chip. Let's say it was something that stupid and crazy. Why is it that that's happening on the other side of the board? If you wish to combine several pads internally, why not simply have traces on this side of the board under the chip? Why run that trace on the other side of the board so that a signal can duplicate itself or something within one chip? I don't get it. Really? Really? And I'm the one with the brain injury. Apple, if you're hiring, <laughs> I think I finally got the qualifications. All right, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Ah. Don't delay. Bye today.